Hello, welcome back to Rheumatology for medical student and intern. Today we have a different guest, Alin or Hi, Dr. Margaret Chun. Okay, Alin, um, how was your day so far? Good. Thank Good? you for asking. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Alin. Can you uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself so uh, the sure. audience can, can learn more about you? Sure. So I'm Aline. I'm a fourth year medical student right now at California North State University. I'm originally from Southern California and I'm applying for a residency in ophthalmology and I'm happy to be here working in the rheumatology clinic with Dr. Tran. Well, ophthalmology. So, yes. uh, <laughs> all right. So um, how long is ophthalmology uh, residency training? Mm -hmm. So ophthalmology residency training is four years across the nation. Wow. And actually the first year requires an intern year, which is done either in internal medicine or in surgery. Mm -hmm. And the last three years, basically, we start our ophthalmology training. Okay. And during our first year, we get to take um, electives such as rheumatology. So mm -hmm. that's why this field particularly excites me, and I'm happy to learn from being in your clinic. Thank you, Aline. All right, so let's see... Um, hmm. So what comments between ophthalmologists and rheumatologists? What do you think? Well, for one is uveitis. Okay, uveitis. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's common. Yes. What else? And uh, Plaquenil. Okay, Plaquenil. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's a celebrity drug, right? It's um for this year, uh, people probably know about Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine, a famous famous drug. Today we will talk about lupus, and then we will talk about Plaquenil in a bit. Uh, because it has um, some potential, a serious side effect that um, ophthalmologists and rheumatologists will work together. All right, so Alin, let's uh, recap about the lupus K that we saw today. So can you share with us what uh, is about this patient, lupus? Yes, so today we saw a patient who was 25 years old woman mm -hmm. presented to our clinic complaining of about three months of pain in different parts of their body, particularly okay. in their in their hands, yes. um, some joint pain. She also had a Mahler rash. Yes, <laughs> rash in the face, butterfly. Yes, butterfly rash on her face and some erythematous plaques. Mm -hmm. She also had some lab findings that were particularly interesting to us that may have pointed towards the diagnosis of lupus. So let's talk about diagnosis um, lupus. Aline, can you share with us how would you diagnose lupus like this patient? Sure. So according to the American College of Rheumatology, the criteria is that patients display four out of the 11 common symptoms. Mm -hmm. And these common symptoms, some of them were exhibited in our patient, which allowed us to diagnose her. And these common ones include having the malar rash mm -hmm. or something a little bit more different called the discoid rash. Mm -hmm. Patients can have photosensitivity to light, so they uh, really need to be careful of being exposed to sunlight. Exactly. Um, oral ulcers or any kind of mucocutaneous ulcers are also mm -hmm. seen in patients. Also uh, arthritis, which is exhibited in about 90% of patients with lupus. Serositis, which includes pericarditis or pleuritis, which is inflammation of the heart or the lungs. Renal disease, which is also present in many lupus patients. Neuro disorders, such as seizures, cerebritis, <laughs> and even um, psychosis. And patients can have hematologic disorders, such as lymphopenia or cyto thrombocytopenia. Mm -hmm. Also immunologic conditions, like we can test their blood and find that they have double-stranded DNA uh, antibodies in their blood. And also a positive ANA is the 11th criteria. So for patients with four out of the 11, we can diagnose them based on the ACR. Wow, so that's a lot. And how do we remember those, <laughs> um, right? Right. This is, this is how I tell students. In fact, if you think about lupus, this is a multi-organ disease. Right. So lupus basically is our immune system, the antibody attack our organs. Whenever it attacks, it will cause damage. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for those damage. For example, you just mentioned about the heart, the pericardial effusion. So if it affects the heart, we have the problem. If it does affect the kidney, then we have other problems. So bas basically, these 11 criteria are based on those other organs, and we see what are the uh, injury or the damage. All right, so we talked about diagnosis already. Um, let's move on to how to treat lupus, right? Yes. Because whenever you guys see that, <laughs> I say, oh my God, how, how do we treat lupus? So let's start with you. Sure, so lupus is mostly treated with um, 
anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. medications. So the three medications that are FDA approved for the treatment of lupus is prednisone, steroids, and hydroxychloroquine, also known as Plaquenil, and Benlista. So steroids are used for anti-inflammatory purposes, even in acute settings, and um, hydroxychloroquine is mostly used for preventing the progression of lupus. Mm -hmm. And Benlista is also a monoclonal antibody that is immunosuppressive for B cells. But I know that some of the patients we see here in clinic um, are kind of stable and they're not doing as bad. Yeah. So how do you manage patients and how are the patients different in the inpatient setting? Uh, this is actually one of the points that I like to show you guys who mm -hmm. rotate here and also in the hospital rheumatology rotation. Because the first thing that we need to do when we try to treat a lupus patient, we need to classify what type of lupus, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because lupus affects multi-organs. So it will affect kidneys, it will affect heart, mm -hmm. and also the skin. Depends on what subtype of lupus, then we may have other treatments. And even, let's go for one example, let's talk about lupus, kidney problem, or we call lupus nephritis. Mm -hmm. Even this subtype of lupus, we classify in six different stages, right. which is you already read about that, right? Yes. Um, so, um, depends on the type of lupus, uh, we have to see and evaluate the patient as a whole person, and then we give the treatment based on uh, their condition and also based on their subtype of lupus. The three drugs that you mentioned just are very broad and general, but in real life, this is real medicines, uh, people use a lot of other drugs. You may heard or you see today, you see South Saf, mm -hmm. or you see uh, immunes, or you may heard about chemotherapy, uh, cytoxins, depend on the acute, like happen right now, flare up, or they have been stable, then we uh, can have different treatment plan. So let's go in to one of the very common subtype uh, lupus that involve kidney or we call lupus nephritis because study had been shown those subtype can happen up to 50% people with lupus. Mm -hmm. It means one out of two people, for example, the patient that we saw today, mm -hmm. if we don't treat aggressively, she may go on to kidney problem, lupus nephritis, and ultimately they have to have dialysis, which is not good. So can you right. share with us what you read to, today about the uh, sick classification of lupus nephritis? Sure. So generally speaking, lupus nephritis could be very detrimental to patients with lupus. And there are six stages that we classify patients, and those after stage three are generally the ones that we call more severe, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, the first two stages involve more mesangial in involvement of the kidney. Yes. And kind of part of the kidney is affected mm. rather than the entire kidney. Yes. And then stage three and four start expanding and including like focal and diffuse proliferative kidney damage. Mm -hmm. The fifth stage is something we call membranous glomerulonephritis mm -hmm. and that is when it becomes more severe. Mm -hmm. And the sixth stage is advanced um, sc sclerosing involved in the kidney, uh, pretty much more than 90% of the kidney being uh, scarred down. And so the function is really limited at that point. So how would you remember sick uh, classification? <laughs> I like to think of a two, four, six system. Okay. And think of mesangial involvement and then a little bit of uh, getting worse in three and four and then five and six is scarring and lots of immune complex de deposition. Can you guys think about a way to um, explain to a patient? Because even we are a health profession sometimes, mm -hmm. Um, I try to show you guys is it's hard to understand and now we try to translate those concepts for our patient mm -hmm. um, it's even more difficult the way that I tell my patient is think about lupus as a house burning for example California last year we have fire right so right. If, if you're burning a house uh, not you but someone or because of natural disaster the f very first the one or two stages actually the house about to burn so this is one of the best time for you to stop the fire, right? <laughs> this is how you save your house at the moment because they just start at the peripheral of the house, right? The fire just started, that's where you, so the damage just around a small part of the house. Mm -hmm. Now, when they move to state three and four, this is actually your house actively burning. It's like crazy, like one and half the house. Remember that's how we measure 
the damage of the glomerulus in terms of uh, lupus nephritis. So stage 3 and 4 is acute, very severe, and this is likely, if we don't treat it, will progress to kidney failure. So if you don't save a uh, heart at that time, it's likely the heart will burn. And 5 and 6 is after burn. So now you see the damage. And of course, that's you try as much as possible to save it any state, right? At right. the beginning, during, or after. And if we don't, a patient likely go into um, kidney failure, um, and then if they, they do, they may have to dialyze. Mm -hmm. So so that's uh, lupus nephritis. It's way more complex than this <laughs> idea, and then the treatment is also different de depending on these classifications. But uh, for, for those who are missed an intern, hopefully it gives you some idea about lupus nephritis. All right, let's uh, go to other aspect. And I think this is more interesting because you're going to be a future ophthalmologist. Uh, let's talk about Plaquenil. Sure. Because this is the, uh, the drug that lupus patient will be on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget to check the side effect of this drug because of what? So Plaquenil can cause what we call uh, retinotoxicity. Mm -hmm. It can be very toxic to the back of the eye, the, the part of the eye that perceives uh, light and mm -hmm. is sensitive to light. Yes. So a lot of patients will have ma uh, what's called maculopathy. Mm -hmm. the, their rods and cones will be damaged because of the um, Plaquenil. Yes. We usually recommend patients who have been on this medication for five years to get screened by an ophthalmologist annually in order to check for um, retinotoxicity and any vision loss. Some of these patients present already complaining of trouble seeing colors and having vision loss. I see. So if patient is on Plaquenil for a number of years, they definitely need to see an ophthalmologist to look for the potential damage because of the drugs. Because of that, uh, when I put patient on Plaquenil, I usually try at a lower dose mm -hmm. as much as possible. This concept also true in rheumatology as well as in medicine. You want to start with the most effective lowest dose mm -hmm. and go from there. And even if we're high dose, try to go down a lower dose if that's possible later. So remember to ask your ophthalmologist or your rheumatologist about the eye or any symptom of color change, right? We cannot mm -hmm. see color. Uh, check out with your ophthalmologist, the eye doctor and surgeons. Let's move to another aspect of lupus treatment because we saw lupus patient today as outpatient in mm -hmm. clinic. Have you ever seen a lupus patient in the hospital? Yes, I have seen lupus patients in the hospital and some of them are unfortunately in the ICU and mm -hmm. they're treating them becomes more difficult. Can you tell us how that's different and how that differs from some of the patients we see in office who are more stable on their medication? Lupus treatment outpatient like this clinic and lupus treatment in the hospital completely different, mm -hmm. like day and night. So here in the clinic, our goal is to prevent further or future flare of lupus. That means they won't have lupus attack in the future if they continue on those stable medications. We monitoring, we like to make sure what are the risk factors that can lead to future lupus flare. Mm -hmm. However, in the hospital, completely different game. In the hospital, the number one goal is to protect further end organ damage. In the case of lupus nephritis, we want to see if we can save the kidney. Ultimately, we want to save patient life. Because if they have lupus flare and they have kidney failure and they have heart problem, they have multi-organ failure, they have infection, they have sepsis, they may die. So your role uh, as a rheumatologist in ICU, particularly, um, it's very important. In hospital, we use a lot of different tools. We mm -hmm. use very strong medication. We use IV steroid, we use chemotherapy, uh, we use advanced diagnostic tool, uh, we have dialysis at bedside. Hopefully, that make a quicker diagnosis and a better um, or more effective treatment for lupus in patient. I would say, in summary, if I take you uh, to inpatient lupus, uh, we see more trauma, more actions. It's not like house MD or um, whatever movie <laughs> you saw about uh, medicine. But in a way, it's kind of, uh, you really see your lab looks, oh, oh my God, look at this acute 
uh, renal injury go like the creatinine level go up like this, potent urea go up like this. It happens just within hours. And when you see the patient decompensate hour just right in front of you. And momentarily, we may put the patient into a ventilator. Mm -hmm. And momentarily, we put the patient into a catheter for dialysis. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of action, and, and that's require a multidisciplinary team, ICU, cardiologist, infected disease, a rheumatologist, nephrologist, and all the ologists <laughs> come to see a patient with lupus in inpatient or ICU. Um, so, does this sound fun to you? Yes, I can only imagine the amount of knowledge that the multidisciplinary team has to bring in order to help the patient yes. because lupus is a multi-organ. Um. All right, so we talked about lupus diagnosis. We mentioned briefly about the, the uh, criteria and then treatments. And then we talked a bit about lupus kidney or lupus nephritis. Uh, what else? What other thing that you want to share with us? So I was wondering if you see any, or how much lupus you see in your predominantly Asian population. That's a great question, because lupus initially, a lot of study about lupus actually based on Caucasians or non-Asian populations. Uh, a lot of drugs we use today actually initially have not been tested in the Asian populations. Mm -hmm. Benlista, for example, this is one of the latest drugs. Initially, um, approval and they use predominantly in Caucasians uh, and then um, black or uh, Hispanics. But now we have more study and yes, uh, we have more patients or in Asian populations. Disease is, um, is everywhere and lupus is not exception. It's happened in Asian population as well as any ethnicity. It's just we don't recognize or we don't have enough diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share with us? I'm also wondering how do you differentiate between systemic lupus and discoid lupus? Okay, great question. A lot of people hear about lupus and they assume, and this is, this is something um, something should not happen in, in live or social media, it's assumptions. Mm -hmm. Lupus, they think this is a systemic disease. That means it affects multi-organs. In fact, lupus sometimes may affect just one organ it happened only in the skin. So we have localized lupus, and in that case, we have discal lupus. Bottom line for you guys, for students and interns, whenever you see a lupus patient, you should distinguish uh, whether this lupus localized or this is systemic. When it is systemic, it means it's multi-organ involvement. Then the next question is, how many organs involved? Mm -hmm. And depends on the major organ get involvement, for example, the kidney mm -hmm. or the heart. We have a sub tab and then we will follow with that and we make sure we have the ologists who are involved with that particular organ, for example, cardiologists or nephrologists or neurologists together. Then we will find a, a comprehensive treatment plan for lupus because this is a multi-organ disease and we need a multidisciplinary team to conquer this disease. Thank you for watching Rheumatology for Medical Students and Interns where we're providing basic knowledge about rheumatologist condition